Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We continue the series of Gurtum meetups and within this initiative, we discuss the most relevant topics and share experience with our community. My name is Oleg Zharkovsky. I'm the Alone Trainer's team lead. And also here with me, Pavel Chibatarev, the Alone Trainer. Hello, everyone. Paul will join us during questions and answers section because today's topics is complex enough for one person to deal with it alone. We are going to talk about different ways of roots control. But we, before we start, I want to remind you about some upcoming changes. I'm sure you are already used to watch our meetups every Thursday. Even if you miss some, you can watch the records in a special playlist. Link is in the description below. But we've got something new for you. Join us on GPS Hardware Manufacturer's Top 10 Awards Ceremony on July 30th, where we are going to reward the fastest growing hardware manufacturers at Vialo. Our partners with the best units growth dynamics will be rewarded at Vialon Top 50 Global Ceremony on the 6th of August. And finally, on August 13th, there will be ceremony for the winner of our new contest, IoT Project of the Year. By the way, you still have three weeks to apply your IoT project to this contest. Well, oh, we've got so many new events this summer, it seems like no time for summertime sadness is left. Anyway, let's get back to the meetups. Have you watched my previous one? I've shared my answer to the question how to solve any case with Vialon there. And the answer was to focus on the instrument, dive deep into Vialon features and get as many knowledge about uh, in this, its possibilities as possible. But I'm going to use another approach today, not because the previous one is wrong, but because sometimes you just hurry to help a client. Uh, that's why I'll show you the way to choose a proper roots control instrument, even without knowing each of the instruments. I hope it sounds interesting enough to stay with us for one hour. So what do we have in the plan today? First of all, we'll talk um, uh, about the possible solutions for roots control. After that, I'll share a features comparison table to choose a proper instrument. Then we'll check this table with some of my examples. And finally, Paul and me together will try to answer your questions from the chat. You already can send them if you've got some. That's it. Are we ready to start? I hope we are. And I want to start with the memes. I think the one uh, about the expectation versus reality is a good one to describe our case. When client uh, requests roots control, you expect to see a single multi-tool root that suits every type of such request. And here is the reality. There is a special module roots in Vialon you can combine several simple instruments like notifications, reports, and geofences to control routes. I use first letters of these uh, words, notifications, reports, geofences, and call it energy. Also, you can use web applications, logistics, and Nimbus to work with some types of routes. The first reaction to such number of instruments is clear enough. One instrument is simple and good, many instruments are complex and bad. But let's take a look at it from the other point of view. If you have many different instruments to choose from, then you have the opportunities. But if you have only one instrument, it sounds like a restriction or limit. And by the way, in both cases, the client will get only one instrument. So it works like that. Partner take all the instrument, choose the most suitable one, set it up and provide the solution to the client. And that's the best way. The only thing left is to understand how to choose one out of four. That's why we are all here and I'll try to simplify this choice for you. But firstly, let's refresh the information about each of these instruments. Also, we'll have to talk about the terminology. Yeah, I know that nobody wants to do it, but we have to. 
uh, it's impossible to talk about four different instruments in the same words until we check the terminology. Here it is. So uh, talking about the roots model, um, it uh, works in the following way. Checkpoints form a root, then a, a shadow is added, and the round is created by assigning a unit to a shadow. There are some general uh, definitions that can be applied toward different root tools in Vialon. Therefore, I will be using them with this uh, within this session. So uh, you can see this uh, colored column. The second instrument, energy. Uh, geofences and reports in a combination or separately can be used for the different purposes. They do not form any kind of entities like uh, roots, uh, shadows, or, or rounds. However, there are some properties that can be used as an alternative to the mentioned elements. So uh, for the checkpoint, we'll have the geofences. The set of these checkpoints, well, we've got nothing like that, but probably you can create a geofence of uh, the uh, type line instead of it. Uh, for the time of passing through points, you can use time limitations in the notifications and reports. And well, we have nothing uh, for the round, but anyway, we'll see the result. On the contemporary, the logistics app is focused on uh, one task as it was designed for a delivery. A delivery is required when an order is received, therefore, Check, uh, checkpoints in the logistics are called orders. A definition like root uh, can be applied, uh, uh, but rounds do not exist in the app. We use active roots instead of it. And um, well, talking about the uh, schedule, we don't have it, uh, but we have the delivery interval for every order. Well, uh, the app is mainly used for the delivery services, but like most of the Valon tools, it can be used for different purposes. And one more specialized app is Nimbus, and it is designed for public transport. That's why every checkpoint here is a stop. Other definitions are almost the same as for the routes module, except the round is called right here. But does Nimbus suit every type of public transport? Well, almost all of them. And yes, I said almost, and we are going to talk about a little bit later. And we are getting to the essence of our meetup. I'll show you a comparison table with 15 criteria. The main part of them were added by the partners based on practical business cases. And that's the most valuable thing. You can add some more criteria later, but let us firstly check how they work. The table is big enough, so I divided it into three parts, starting from the most common criteria to the most specific. Let's go. Supported features are marked with a green color, uh, while for the non-supported features, a red color is used. A yellow color marks a, a partially supported feature that requires additional clarification. I'll try to give it. So the, the, first, the first criterion, uh, it refers to the real-time display and notifications. Uh, the routes are marked with a yellow color because uh, they have a specific output for the online rounds. So let me show it to you. Here we are on the uh, routes uh, tab uh, at the monitoring site. Uh, well, the rounds are displayed on a timeline. You can see it below. Uh, on this timeline, you can see the checkpoints. If they are visited, they are filled with a color. If um, they are not visited yet, then uh, they are transparent inside. And uh, well, uh, to say honestly, the main problem of such uh, um, timeline is that you can't understand if the unit is uh, coming close to the uh, checkpoint or not. So this line stands not for the unit, but for the current time. So it gives us no information about the unit position. So if I move the map away, it will be like, I don't know when it will be, uh, um, when it will be checked. 
So um, the only way to understand it is to wait until the, the moment, the time, and if the checkpoint is filled with color, then it was visited. If not, then not. <laughs> That's it. The second way to check it is to take a look on the mm, unit on the map. But anyway, I don't think that it's a, a easy thing to understand. It's pretty puzzling. Just to compare, let's, let's, che uh, let's check how it is done in the Nimbus. So here it is. So I really like it. So you can see all the stops. You can see the unit where it is. And uh, depending on the color, you can understand if the uh, unit is late or not, and so on. So I really like this way of displaying online information. The second criterion, the reports. Each solution has own reports. But how do we find them? I will cover the question in the next point. Displaying result in the monitoring system. Well, routes and energies are the part of the monitoring system and all the features, including reports, are available from the monitoring interface directly. Logistics has a dedicated orders table displaying orders details that were used to form routes. Let me show it to you. So over here, outside of the web application logistics, I can take the table that is called orders, if I'm not mistaken. Here it is. And it will show me uh, the, the uh, work of the logistics uh, web application like that. So uh, it is possible to see the information about logistics outside of the web application and in the interface of the monitoring system. And it is impossible for the Nimbus. The fourth criterion. In the routes module um, and Nimbus, a visit is marked upon receiving coordinates from a checkpoint. So uh, if the unit is inside, then we say that the point was visited. There is no additional control. Um, at the same time, with a logistics app, it is possible to get additional confirmation for, uh, both from a driver or from the dispatcher. And a driver can even add a picture, signature, or the file attached to the order. Uh, let me show you too how it looks like from the side of the dispatcher. So you can see that this order is not confirmed. And I can do it. I can add some uh, comment. And after that, the question uh, sign will disappear like that. So here is the difference between the order uh, confirmed and not. And um, no, it was done from the side of the dispatcher. So uh, I can add only the text, but driver can do more from a special logistics app. We'll talk about it a little bit later. And uh, well, Talking about the energy and the force criterion, I can say that, well, there are some uh, filters in the notifications and reports, but uh, there is a question how to use them to confirm an order. Maybe a tracker should have an external button to push upon delivery. Maybe a weight sensor can be used somehow. Uh, I don't know. All in all, that is why this point is marked with a yellow color. Maybe it is possible to come up with a certain solution, but which one exactly, who knows? It depends on a client's request. The fifth criterion, controlling tracks between the points. As you can see, uh, all the instruments except routes support it. Uh, well, I need to show you this scene. Let's take a look on the route and uh, let me copy the, the, this one. And probably I can uh, reorder some points. And after that, I can click on uh, the button optimize. So the order of the point has changed. And also we can see this green track over here between the points. So it seems like routes can control the track between the checkpoints. Well, they uh, can do it because when I click save, this track disappears. So it is used only for the uh, checkpoints, um, num uh, checkpoints optimization. 
something like that. And uh, the only way how you can control the uh, way the unit goes through these checkpoints is with help of the time. So I can add here, I can add here a special uh, schedule and uh, you can uh, write down the correct time depending on the distance between the deliveries. And in that case, uh, if the unit will choose the wrong way, then it will be just late. That's it. But well, it's not the control of the way between the checkpoints, but it's some, something alternative. We have checked all the, um, all the criteria from the first part of the table. Let's continue with the more specific criteria. Uh, the sixth criterion, the same points every day. All instruments have this feature. I just want to mention how it is done in logistics. As I said, checkpoints and logistics are called orders. And when the order is fulfilled, it is usually deleted. It is not needed anymore. Such orders is called single. But if you are going to deliver something to the same address later, then you can use a permanent order. So when I create a new one, or I can edit the, the current one, but anyway, here it is, the type single or the type permanent. Uh, and by the way, if you have several permanent orders, you can combine them into the template. So it will be the combination of uh, permanent orders that can be fast enough started every day. The seventh criterion, new points every day. Well, as you can understand, the previous criteria was added into the table mostly to, to compare it with this one. Uh, logistics is created uh, for new orders every day. It's green here, you can see it. You can add new geofences to notifications and reports easy enough. It's like basic feature, but we don't have anything like a, a checkpoints uh, or the routes in, in this column. And that is why it is, it is still yellow. And um, well, it is possible to add new checkpoints into the uh, NIMBAS, but as you understand, we are talking about the public transport mainly. And uh, I'm not sure that there, there are a lot of new stops in a city every day. That's why uh, this option, you can find it there, but still it, it's not the, the, as easy as in logistics. And uh, the hardest thing to add something new is the uh, uh, routes module. The only way to do it is to add a new route or copy already created. That's why you can also see here the red color. Automatic start of the route control. Routes in logistics are always activated manually. The dispatcher must choose the orders and the unit to start the delivery, like that. So it's red. There is no uh, start of a route in the energy because, well, there, there is no route there. <laughs> and still it is possible to use some filters and time limitation to ignore unit movement. I mean, like standard scenes over here in the end of um, every notification. Next, 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 next. And over here, we've got the time limitation. Maybe it can help you. The same you can find in the reports. Um, and the only uh, scene uh, is like uh, Roots module and Nimbus. They, they have this feature already built in. So uh, that's because they have the schedules. So if you have the schedule, if you know the exact time when it should start, then you can automatically start this route control. This is how it works. Uh, the next point, schedule uh, uh, relative to the uh, route start. And as we can see, the, the winner is the routes module. It's the only instrument that allows us to do such thing, but why do we need it? 
It is very useful when you don't know when the route will start, but you know the distance or the, I mean the mileage and the time distance between the points. And you can achieve this scene with the help of the uh, relatives uh, schedule. Let, let me show it to you. So uh, here it is relative to activation. And uh, if we talk about relative today, in that case, you should type here something like uh, that, then a little bit later come to the second point, a little bit later come the third point and so on. If you use relative to activation, in that case, uh, you should type the distance between them. So 45 minutes to get from the first to the second. Then, um, for example, 30 minutes to get from the second to the third and so on. And um, you can activate such a shadow with the help of the uh, manual activation like that, create a manual round, or you can do it with the help of a notification. Uh, the standard scene is when the, the for example, bus leaves the, uh, the, the um, parking uh, and when it leaves the geofence, for example, this one outside, then the, um, let's create a round like that. So that's the point. You can create as many um, rounds as you want, not depending on the shadow. And the final criterion in this part of a table is track and points order optimization. Uh, well, Nimbus can optimize only the track between the points, but not the points order. That's why it is yellow here. Uh, all the instruments except energies can optimize the track. Uh, that's why the energy is yellow, but still anyway, you can use a special additional instrument routine for it, but well, it's one more additional instrument and that is why this cell is marked as yellow. And let's switch to the last page, the, the most specific criteria in the uh, third part of the table. Uh, public transport. Well, as you can see, this criterion was sponsored by Nimbus developers. Uh, but at the same time, routes module and energy can also be used for the public transport. But anyway, I recommend to check Nimbus firstly, just, just look at it. This app is wonderful for the public transport. The next criterion is replacing units while the uh, route is in progress. Uh, if the round started in the routes module, then nothing can be changed until uh, you want to start the new one. And that's the only way, just delete the previous round and create a new one. That's why it is red. Uh, there is no uh, such term as root in the energies. That's why unit can't be changed in, um, um, in it. <laughs> yeah, but well, you can just execute the report over, uh, other the, uh, over other unit, or you can add one more unit to the notification. Well, you have to do a lot of steps in that case. That's why it, it is possible, but still, I have marked it as yellow. And uh, talking about the logistics and Nimbus, they have an already built-in function for this case. Let me show it to you. So uh, for example, if the, uh, I need to change the bus, but this bus is on her right right now, then I can uh, go to this tab. And for example, let's choose, let's choose uh, this one, yeah. I can just click on it and change to another unit. So as you can see, it's simple enough. And uh, let's check the logistics. So uh, first of all, I need to create a, um, a round. In that case, I, I'll use the template. I have an active 
root. Now it is planning, but in a second, one, two, three, and yeah, here it is. It is active right now. And uh, if I want to change the unit, I can just click on a special button over here, select new unit, that's it. As I said, the built-in function, I, I love it. The next point, moving checkpoints. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy, but here is an example. Trucks should collect crops gathering by harvesters, but these harvesters are moving through the field all the time. So the harvesters are like moving checkpoints for this truck. And uh, well, the, the uh, only uh, instrument that can suit you 100% is the roots module. I'll show it to you. So when you create a new one, you can add here the checkpoint as an address. You can add here the checkpoint as a geofence, or you can choose a unit as a checkpoint like that. All these points on the map will be moving. Looks strange, but sometimes it's very useful. Uh, and talking about the notifications, well, we've got a special notification for it. This notification is called interposition of units. So approaching or moving away. Or as an alternative, you can go to the report tab, create a new report, for example, with a table uh, geofence. Do I have one? Okay, here it is. Uh, and in the settings of this table. If I scroll down, I'll see the list of geofences and below here is the list of units. So these units can be also the circle geofences with this radius. So almost the same as the interposition of the units, but also in, in the past, the notification work with uh, only online data. And with the help of the report, we can analyze the uh, previously received messages. So nothing like that in logistics and Nimbus. And the final criterion is mobile application and talking about the Roost models, it's just too old for this stuff. Um, well, Nimbus have a special uh, locator uh, that can be used by the passengers. Uh, it uh, differs a little bit from the other locators that we use, uh, but still it is possible to, to work with it uh, from the mobile, uh, mobile smartphone. So that's why I have marked it as a yellow. And uh, talking about the energy, well, first of all, yes, we've got the locator. I mean, this link, let me show it. I can create a link, for example, to show you all these units and the tracks and the geofences and okay. And using this link, you can share it with some of your, I don't know, friends and relatives, but, but in that case, I mean the clients, the passengers probably, and um, they can see uh, all units on the map without, without uh, login. So they don't need to authorize in a system. This is how it works. And this link, it have a lifetime. In that case, only 30 seconds are left. But also for uh, displaying the reports and the geofences, you can use the mobile app via long. And um, talking about the logistics, uh, I think it's the uh, winner of this criterion because Logistics have uh, its own special app for drivers, for the uh, couriers, and also the locator link for the clients, like that. And right now you can see the example, how it looks like when the locator link is dead. So it seems like we have finished looking through the comparison table. Sounds great. But I want us to check it on practice. And I've prepared several examples for it. So the first one, let's say the client wants to control the buses for transporting employees to the working place, some, some kind of enterprise. The list of employees doesn't change often, but their shifts change a lot from day to day. 
and the client needs to calculate the best route every day. So what do we have here? The first idea is to check Criterion 11 because, well, we are talking about some buses with the passengers. So it seems like it's a public transport. Done, we'll take an in-bus, but wait, let's check other criteria. Uh, um, the client, uh, client's request contained the control and calculation of the best way for every day. So the, the uh, way between the points is criterion number five. Yep, so we can control it. And as you can see, uh, we can strike out the, the roots module with the help of this fifth criterion. And the final scene that we should check is number 10. So um, every day, as I understand, every day uh, the dispatcher will choose the employees that should be visited and the system should calculate the best way to visit them. So it should optimize these points. And uh, we can choose um, routes or logistics, but we remember the fifth point. So it seems like in that case, the best way is to choose logistics. And I know it sounds strange because we are used to think about logistics as it is the app for deliveries. But in that case, we can use logistics to gather something like employees in, in our case. So uh, the answer for the first example is the logistics based on what we know. Probably it will see the client. The second example, um, the dispatcher requires online control and reports about the intercity buses, but it has no strict uh, schedule. The bus starts the trip only when a certain number of passengers are inside. That's the case. So uh, let's check, let's check some criteria. Um, well, the dispatcher requires um, online control and reports. So it's criteria one and two. Well, they, they are not so helpful uh, to make a choice. Uh, uh, what else do we have? The bus moves through the same stops all the time. Okay, it's criterion number six. Well, it, it is also not very helpful. And once again, it seems like we are talking about the public transport. Should we choose a new bus based on the 11th uh, criterion? Well, I'd say yes, but there is a special criterion number nine. Uh, as you remember, the bus starts the trip only when a certain number of passengers are inside. So there is no exact time of a, a route to start. Uh, but still, we know the distance between the further checkpoints. So in that case, based on the criterion number nine, it seems like the best solution is routes module. And once again, pay attention that instead of on the NIM bus for public transport, uh, sometimes we should use something else. And the final example, the third one, uh, cargo delivery from one country to another. The route includes border crossing, but the exact time of passing customs control is unknown. It is necessary to control the unit movement through an optimal pass. And I'll try to solve it within three criteria. The 13th, routes with long duration. I think then if we are talking about the cargo delivery from one country to another, it will take some days. So uh, Nimbus won't, won't uh, help us in that case and the uh, logistics uh, also. Hmm. It's a strange pause, sorry for that, but it seems like I, uh, I've missed this point. That's wrong. I need to give some more comments, sorry for that, but I need to explain you. So I'm so glad that we have this example. Uh, why can't we have the long uh, 
long um, route uh, in the Nimbus. I'll show it to you. So if we um, switch to the Nimbus, if we click on any route, and if you go to the shadows, then you'll see that here we have no field for the date. We have only field for the time. Well, it's clear enough, but uh, how can we uh, explain to the system that this time is for example, for today, and this one is for tomorrow? Well, we can do it with the help of this special button past midnight. But as you can understand past midnight, so we can include only two days, only two days in the route. That's why it is impossible to control a long uh, route with the help of an Nimbus. And talking about the logistics, well, the main aim of the logistics algorithm is to make the delivery as fast as possible. So uh, that's why uh, when uh, you will even mark here something like, I need to, um, it is okay if this uh, order will be delivered in 24 hours, like that. Uh, anyway, the system will choose the uh, closest possible time and it will be visited near the midnight if it is possible because the fastest solution is the best. So it is possible to make the uh, logistic, logistics control the uh, deliveries uh, for several days, but it's not so easy. The main idea of the algorithm is to make it as fast as possible. That's why in this table, the logistics is marked as yellow. And let's get back to our example. As you can see, we need to deliver cargo to other countries so based on the 13th criterion, we have only two instruments left, roots module and the energy, energy. And let's take a look on the next criterion to solve this case, it's 10, number 10. Uh, I think that um, we need to uh, control, as we know, we need to control the optimal pass. So first of all, we need to find the optimal pass and both of the left uh, instruments are okay with it. So with the roots module and with the energy, you can get it, but uh, how to choose. And in that case, I recommend to switch to the uh, fifth criterion because it is necessary to control uh, the unit movement through the optimal pass. So we have find out this optimal pass, but we need to also to control uh, the unit follows it. And in that case, the roots model can't help us. So the answer is energy. For the third example, based on what we know, the answer is energy. And I've tried to show you some examples when the first idea is not always the best one. And further check of criteria shows us what instrument can be better. And you probably noticed I didn't mention Nimbus as a solution. And well, I can see that Nimbus is a great example of a really good niche solution. That's why it is mainly used for public transport. Uh, I've added it to the uh, table just to compare it with other instruments. Uh, but well, uh, sometimes you can use other instrument but for public transport, but still try to check Nimbus firstly. And I know the examples when Nimbus is used for some other uh, for some other spheres. For example, for the school buses, for the garbage trucks, or the buses for employees. Well. You can also solve these cases with help of Nimbus. Probably it's not the best one, but it is possible. And depending on the client, maybe even you should choose a Nimbus. I hope my examples were useful for you. Maybe you can add some more criteria to this table or even create another table to compare some other instruments. Um, but let's continue with your examples and questions. And it's time to call for my colleague, Pavel Chipadaryov, balance trainer.
Hello once again, Paul. Hello. How many users uh, are online with us and what questions do we have? Uh, right now we have 23 users watching this uh, meetup. And uh, well, uh, we have uh, some questions from John Grigorcevich and uh, I should say they are pretty complicated. Um, we, li uh, we like such questions. Okay, let, let's do it. <laughs> let's try to solve it. Uh, yes, let's try to start with the first question from John. Um, uh, first, I'll uh, read the question itself. Uh, can I get an alert in routes if a route does not start on time? Uh, well, it was a little bit puzzling uh, at first uh, because it lacks some details. Uh, John added more details saying that the truck was scheduled to leave probably on a route at 9 a.m., for example, uh, but at 9.15, he has not started the route uh, yet. Um, uh, this question was about uh, mainly about the routes module, and um, uh, I should say that uh, uh, this module uses a different algorithm. Uh, it's not possible to start uh, let, let's take in the quotes uh, the, 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 this definition to start a route uh, in the routes module without a unit. So mm -hmm. answering this question, you cannot have an active route without a unit. And thus it's not possible to control if a unit does not start a route. Um, but it is possible with a Nimbus application. Uh, okay. In the Nimbus yeah. application, we have notifications and special markers uh, uh, to uh, detect if the unit uh, did not show up on the route. Okay, because, uh, uh, so yeah. what we have for the routes module is the uh, notification about the route progress. Yeah, so uh, it can give us a notification when the round started. Yes, but... Um, it can't start without a unit. That's why probably instead of it, uh, as I understand the moment when, when the unit uh, starts th the route is when it leaves some checkpoint, some, some area on the map. So instead of using some complex scenes, probably you can combine routes and just a simple Jafan's notification probably. So uh, something like that. Or you can control, for example, the ignition of the unit. So uh, was it turned on? You can try to control the speed. Uh, did the unit ha have a speed at that moment? Something like that. So uh, as you can see, there are different ways. And Paul is talking about the Nimbus. Uh, he means the following. Uh, I should go to the... Mm, User settings. Yep, to the notifications. Ah, I got it. User settings. Yep. And here I can uh, choose this option. Now show at first point. Or but rides I... activated without a unit. Okay. You, you mean like that. But probably both of them can suit different situations. It depends on what you mean with the word uh, root doesn't start. <laughs> So there are different solutions and probably the Nimbus will suit you. But the question is, uh, does the Nimbus suit you for the further root control? And if yes, then probably you should choose this instrument. Uh, if not, then probably we need more details. And uh, that's it. What other questions do we have? Uh, well, again, another question from uh, John. Um, he's asking if uh, it's possible to have many routes uh, uh, that I can link together to create a single journey, but report on each route, the journey showing standard route time and uh, the variance when the journey is executed. Uh, well, I think that John is, uh, again, talking about uh, a feature that we have in the... Uh, Nimbus application uh, where it is possible to um, group different routes and form the so-called blocks. Uh, a block is a, 
uh, unity of different roots uh, um, that are united and then we can uh, get reports for, for a whole block containing, for example, uh, three or five different roots. Well, uh, I, I'm not good enough in, in public transport. And for me, the blocks uh, was not uh, clear enough from the very beginning. But uh, I explain it for myself like the plan for the driver. So, uh, hello, here is your plan for today. And here is the uh, uh, shuttle for this driver, like uh, the combination of several uh shadows or routes that you should go through something like that so probably that's what you mean yeah as i said in the beginning the, the questions about this topic are really complex because uh, just uh, uh remember how the terminology <laughs> table looked like <laughs> uh, that's why it's not so uh, always so clear what you mean exactly and uh, our possible solution for you is using the blocks from the nimbus any other questions so far no uh, but john is trying to add more details uh, uh, to uh, his examples uh, and i'm trying to answer them in the chat right now okay uh, while you try to to help him uh, in the chat i'll answer one more question about the nimbus locator yeah it seems like all the questions are about, about the nimbus uh so um you uh, i've mentioned that the nimbus locator differs a little bit from from other locators so i I've showed you the uh, locator from the um, monitoring interface, the standard one. The same is for the logistics, but it is sent to the, to the client who is waiting for the delivery. And uh, in the Nimbus, it differs a little bit. It is created in the administration panel, if I'm not mistaken, over here. And let's take a look at it. It has more elements. Uh, it has more elements. I mean the following. Uh, you can see here not only the units. You can see uh, also their numbers and the number of, of the root. And also you can see the checkpoints over here. Well, it seems it's not the best map to take a look, but here it is. And if you click on, on uh, the stop, you can see what is the next bus to come here. Here it is. In less than a minute, there will be a, a bus number 47, like that. So it seems like that's the difference of this locator. But uh, I think that still it is pretty the same. The same, but different, but still the same, you know. Um, Well, there are some more questions uh, from other participants, um, and I think uh, uh, I need to cover uh, them. Uh, for on. example, uh, Joseph Costa uh, is asking if there is a, uh, a, any possibility to create a route uh, and send it from the VLON to, uh, to a driver. Uh, well, the answer is yes, and uh, there are two possible options. The first one is uh, by using uh, a command uh, that allows us to send a route that you have created in the monitoring interface. Whoa, I forgot about it. Yes, it is possible, <laughs> but uh, it requires uh, special equipment. Um, I know that it works with the Garmin devices. So you can send the routes checkpoints to a Garmin devices uh, with the help of the command. Another oh, I, option. I, I, wait, wait. I, 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 it seems like I understand it. Like if you have a unit, you should go to the tab commands and create a new command with a type send routes. Yeah, but you have to use a special equipment for Spe that. Special uh, equipment. Okay, yeah. I got it. But that's the algorithm. So the device yes. will be another one, but this is the logic. So, uh, and what is the second way? Uh, 
another option is to use logistics uh, and the mobile uh, logistics application. I think you can uh, carry on from that point yourself. Yep, yep. Uh, for me, the, the only answer is logistics, but uh, I'm glad that you are here with me, Paul. Thank you. Thank you a lot because uh, I forgot about the possibilities of sending the route with the help of the command to the device. Wow. Uh, great. Do we have some other questions in the chat? I think we're now having a discussion of uh, um, how the roots module should be developed further. Uh, some uh, new features should be added and uh, and now it's more of a discussion rather than questions. Uh, can we edit during the meetup? I think no. In that case, I should recommend you uh, the, the correct place to send your requests, your feature requests. Um, we uh, collect them on our forum in a special forum branch. And there you can type the ideas about all the mentioned instruments um, and well, uh, as you can understand, based on the information from this meetup, uh, probably you want to uh, something to be added into the roots, but maybe it will be added to some other instrument and still it will suit you. I hope so. So just uh, go on, uh, discuss these ideas, discuss the things and send it directly to our special forum branch send it to our business analysts and they'll discuss it with you. That's the standard thing. Uh, well, and if we have no more questions, then thank you. And it seems like it's time to end the meetup. Thank you for being with us. If you have some more questions, uh, please direct them to 24 seven support our codex uh, you can uh, reach them via the email support at gutam.com or you can direct these questions directly to us. Uh, you can see our emails right now on the screen. That's it. And before saying goodbye, let me remind you once again about the upcoming events. GPS Hardware Manufacturers Top 10 Awards Ceremony on July 30th. The Alon Top 50 Global Awards Ceremony on August 6, and New Contest IoT Project of the Year on August 13. And also don't miss our next meetup. Diana Chile, the Alon Hosting Expert, will share external JavaScript basics on July 16. That's it. Paul, thank you. Everyone, thank you for your time. Be healthy and good luck. Bye.